for joining us at her green room. I've asked my friend Sheila Harper to share her testimony with you today. Sheila, welcome to her green room, and Thank you. I'm so excited for you to be here. Oh, I'm thrilled. Will you Thank please you. tell us a little bit about your testimony? Sure. Um, well, to start out, I guess uh, the first major thing that happened in my life as I was growing up was um, my mother was a very, very um, just tenacious, incredible Christian woman. And I mean, to the point where I remember when she wouldn't eat with us, it was because I knew she was fasting. She would mm -hmm. cook for us and then she would go to, their be her, to her bedroom and fast. Mm -hmm. And um, then there were other times that I would be asleep and I would, I would wake up and she would be in my room praying in the spirit over me. Oh, wow. And she was just an incredible lady. And um, when I was four years old, we had a, a very horrible car accident and I was thrown through the windshield and she was killed instantly. Mm -hmm. And my sisters were nine and 10 years old at the time. So all of a sudden my father, who was a military man, had to raise these three little girls. And this was back in the 70s. Actually, it was, well, it was 1970. Um, that was the time when men weren't real involved with the kids, you know. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden we're with our dad and he doesn't really know what to do with us. And so he um, did the best that he could and he started dropping me off at a relative's house while my, while my uh, sisters were at school. And it wasn't long before that relative started sexually abusing me. And later on in life, in my 20s, I found out that he was doing the same thing to my sisters, too. Mm -hmm. We finally all confessed to each other and found out. But uh, I, I lived through those years just not really knowing what to do, how to act. What do you do with this? Mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't know what to do at five and six years old. And so my, my father married another woman and she was very horrible. <laughs> I mean, just horrible on a level you can't even imagine. And we lived with her for a few years and then my dad let us go live with my aunt and uncle because the situation there had just gotten so bad. And my uncle was an alcoholic, but it was at their house that we became a family. My sisters and I bonded together. We we survived together. Mm. And honestly, it was during my, the years with my aunt and uncle, those were the happiest of my childhood, actually, in, in living with an alcoholic. So he made life fun, actually, and, uh, and so did my aunt. And they did the best that they could, taking on three girls all of a sudden, you know, and, and they were young as well. So we lived with them for several years. And during that time, I got invited to a revival at a, uh, a little Baptist church. And so I went and I knew that that's what I needed. It was like something just in me. I knew that this is my answer. Mm -hmm. I need Jesus in my heart at 12 years old. I knew it. And I don't remember what the pastor preached on that night or anything because all I wanted was that altar call because I knew that was going to change my life and it was gonna make things good again. The Answers to your mom's <laughs> prayers, probably. Oh, yes. That's what I've always thought. Was, yeah. was, that's what sustained me all mm -hmm. through my life. And so I, I walked the aisle that night and was radically changed. I knew exactly what I was doing. And you were 12? I was 12. And so don't ever discount when a child, because right. they know. And sometimes it's the Holy Spirit drawing them. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's, that's what happened to me that night. And so I became very involved in the church and was a good girl growing up just all through, even though my home life was just chaotic and turmoil and I would live here and I would live there. And, and finally, when I was 18, I, uh, I went to college and had remained a good girl and was just sold out to Jesus and lived for him. And uh, I went out with a guy who wasn't a Christian. It, it seemed so so simple. I mean, just nothing, not a big deal. But I knew that that was something I had been taught that I, I shouldn't do is, is date a guy who wasn't a Christian. And I can't blame it all on him because it was absolutely my choice right. to do what I did. So I went out with him and people think that that is just such a, a uh, such a non-threatening thing to do. One date, what can it hurt? 
But a year and a half later, there I sat. I was pregnant. I wasn't married. My life was, was crazy. I had turned my back on God because I, I thought, you know, here I am. And, and I knew by now this guy wasn't someone that I wanted to be attached to through a child for the rest of my life. I started talking to my friends. They all suggested abortion. I thought this is the easy way out of my problems. And so I chose abortion on March 29th, 1985. I was 19 years old. And it was after that date that my life, I, I've, I've pictured it literally, like when you're on a roller coaster and you're going real slow up the hill and then you top the, 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 you know, the peak and you just go flying down, that was my life. That's how fast it went downhill after abortion. I did everything I possibly could to keep my mind numb because I knew that choice I had made on that day was devastating. And, and we, God never created us to make the decision for life and death for another human being. Right. So we don't have it in us to be able to reason out the results of that choice. Mm. And so to be able to deal with that, you can't on human terms. You need a supernatural transformation yeah. to be able to deal with the results of that choice. That's why the aftermath of abortion is so bad. So for seven years after that date, I became hooked on drugs. I drank every day. I would never commit to any type of relationship. I couldn't hold a steady job. I started not only with drugs and alcohol, I started signing up for credit cards. I don't know how many credit cards I had, but I would, I would max them out with shopping because that would give me a temporary pleasure, temporary high. It, it was just total chaos to put it mildly, in my life. I finally attempted suicide during that time, and I knew it was all because of the abortion, but I thought there's no way God would ever accept me back after what I've done. Mm -hmm. And so I, I went through those seven years of just horrible chaos, and then finally I found my way to a Bible study that gave me back my life. It was mm -hmm. like, <laughs> and I cry every time I think about it because it was like Jesus visited me. Mm -hmm. And it was like he just gave me back my life and, and showed me how his grace covers even the sin of abortion. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I get so emotional. <laughs> it's okay. But it was, a, it was a great victory and I loved it. I loved that feeling so much. I signed up immediately to start teaching that Bible study <laughs> because I thought I don't want to let go of this feeling because when God sets you free from such horrible bondage, you can't stay quiet about it because it is such a miraculous thing. I tried for seven years to fix myself mm -hmm. and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, even during that seven years, I cleaned myself up enough to get married and I even had two children during that time. And I was still just so messed up. Mm -hmm. I married my husband. He didn't know about the abortion. And he wasn't a believer. And he was not a believer. Yeah. So finally, a year and a half after we were married, I told him about the abortion, knowing he was going to leave me. He would divorce me. There's no way he would ever stay with me. And actually, he was relieved because he thought, Okay, now we know what's wrong with you and we can get you help. It was like he had a label finally mm -hmm. because I had taken us on this wild roller coaster ride, our whole family. He never knew who he was going to come home to, if mm -hmm. I was going to be drunk or if I was going to be in the bed crying and depressed or what. Wow. So finally, I, I had the great victory in Jesus when mm -hmm. I went through that Bible study. Wow. What an amazing testimony. <laughs> and I can't wait to hear part two of that testimony in our next video. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony with us. And thank you. So grateful for God's redeeming grace and mm -hmm. the power of his love and the power of transformation that happens when he extends his grace mm -hmm. into our lives. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. And You're thank welcome. you so much for joining us. And I pray that you will watch the next video and hear more about Sheila's testimony.